Someone asked me recently on a comment, what are those things on the neck of your TIG torch? Well, they're ponytail holders. And the reason I leave them there is sometimes I like to use a torch switch. Normally, I'm a foot pedal guy, but sometimes it's more convenient to use a switch. And this is one of those videos where it's going to be a lot easier because I'm welding quarter inch thick stuff. I'm going to be using a number seven gas lens style cup along with the stubby hardware that comes in this TIG Pro Kit. This is quarter inch thick, hot rolled steel. The mill scale has been removed, ground off. I'm using a torch switch with the four T settings with some upslope and downslope, but only about two seconds on each. The filler metal is 1 8 ER70S6. I'm using the lay wire technique, leaving that wire in the puddle with a little bit of oscillation. I've got this piece set up on a big aluminum block for a couple of reasons. Number one being it's a multi-pass weld. I'm going to put five more passes on this thing. And so the heat's going to build up and I've got very limited time to get this thing done. I've got other videos I need to work on. This is kind of a slow go intentionally because I feel like the amperage is just a little bit low. For the root pass on a fillet weld like this, I would prefer to use a 332 filler wire. There's a reason I'm using a 1 8 I'll explain that in just a minute. It's easy to get lack of fusion in the root pass using a 1 8 wire unless you use quite a bit of amperage. So I'd like to be up around 190 amps or so here. I'm using a torch switch as opposed to a foot pedal here because I really don't need the amperage control for something like this. I know about what amperage I want. And I know I'm not gonna need to change it during the middle of the weld. I have the upslope and the downslope set to about two seconds and that's all it takes to get started and then to taper off at the very end of the weld. And since I was already doing a video on the torch switch and how the 2T and 4T function works, I just worked this joint in and didn't bother to hook up the foot pedal. Let's give it a good wire brushing and see what we got. Did that get penetration? Looked a little bit questionable to me, to be honest, looking at it, but that's the reason we test things. So at the end of the video here, I'll do a cross-section test and we'll see what happened. I got five more passes to do though. This is a multi-pass T-joint. The reason I'm doing this video is I got a comment, a question from a viewer. He's a student named Connor and he's having to do uh, a six-pass, multi-pass T-joint using 1 8 ER 70 S6 wire and he's got some stipulations that his instructor wants him to do. I think I kind of know what the issue is. Either way, we're going to put five more passes on this thing and then do a cross-section test. Let's get to it. I asked Connor a, a few questions on the YouTube comment so I could get some direction. Two things popped out at me, 140 amps and the fact he's using a number six cup with 30 CFH. Other folks chimed in and told him more like 15 to 20 CFH would be good on an argon, and I thought that 160 amps would be more appropriate than 140. So I set it to 161, and let's put in that second pass now. Stacking the beads is one of the most important things when you're doing a multi-pass weld of any type. And since TIG doesn't put down as much metal, the tendency is to stack the first bead there over the root too low, and then you wind up with a, a a bunch of low places and a bead that's just uneven, a fillet weld that's uneven. So I'm stacking this one fairly high and probably overcompensating a little bit here. Just in, in a few seconds, we'll see the arc shot again and I'll explain what I'm talking about. It almost appears like I'm welding a weave pass over top of this bead and I, I really kind of am, but I'm just a little bit offset toward the bottom. I could definitely stand to be a little bit more toward the bottom and then just come out about an eighth of an inch past the toe of the root pass. But I think this is going to be okay. I can do some compensation here. It is a six total beads, so I've got some room to make adjustments. With the 4T setting set here and a down slope, I just need to anticipate like two seconds before I get to the end and then let off the trigger and I get just a little bit of tapering off and that's really all you need on something like this. I'm wire brushing every pass so that that next pass won't have any surface oxidation to deal with. 
To speed things up a little bit, we'll jump in midway on the rest of these passes to make for a little bit shorter video. I'm moving the camera around. Some of these views are coming in over the top. Some of them are over my shoulder. Whatever I can make happen here to give you a lot of different perspectives. I really haven't let this thing cool much from start to where I am right now. And so that aluminum block is building up a lot of heat. It's taking a lot of heat out of the piece. And it's helping me keep going without having to stop and let it cool. But that aluminum's getting really toasty right now, too. Well, let's see what kind of shape we're in. We'll give it a quick wire brushing. Take a look and see if we need to make some adjustments. We're in pretty good shape. That aluminum block is really hot now. I'm glad I've got a TIG finger on. Not only does it help me just rest and not have to worry about a finger getting hot, but it actually kind of scoots along really easily. But the main thing, I think, is just being able to focus and concentrate solely on making the weld and not have to be worried about how hot your fingers are getting. A multi-pass TIG fillet weld like this would be somewhat rare to do in an actual workplace or in the field or anything. This is really more of a student exercise to prepare you for doing a multiple pass pipe joint or something like that. But it's, it's a requirement in a lot of schools. And so you, in order to progress and move on to the next thing and get on pipe, you got to master this thing. And so any student having trouble with this joint, I hope this video helps. Obviously, I can't always stop what I'm doing and, and take requests and knock out a video, but this just happened to work in with what I was doing, and I just kind of set aside a couple of hours to shoot this thing, and I thought, well, we'll take one shot at it. If it doesn't turn out, then we'll move on to the next thing, but I think it turned out pretty good. Every now and then, you get lucky. This is the second to the last bead here on a three bead cap, a six total bead T-joint. I'm trying to keep that one eighth filler wire toward the top of the puddle to kind of uh, counteract gravity. Sometimes, you know, you lose concentration and the wire kind of falls down more toward the middle. It's not the end of the world, but it's best practice to keep that filler rod up toward the top on a horizontal weld like this. A little wire brushing and see where we're at. One more bead, and really it doesn't need much. It's almost an even fillet already. I'm going to turn it down for that last bead. Piece is so hot by now that 140 amps would be fine for this last bead. That way I won't have to worry about it sagging, and hopefully won't get any undercut on the top toe of the bead. It might have even been a good idea to drop down to a 332 size diameter uh, filler metal for this last bead. Just didn't need much. What I'm trying to do here is angle the torch more in toward the top member and also really, really watch the top edge of that bead and make sure to hold the toe for just a moment to avoid any undercut. You can see a little bit of oxidation coming into the puddle now and that's because this thing is getting so hot Fortunately, we're just about finished here. That aluminum block is smoking right now. We just pretty much went this thing start to finish without ever letting it cool. The aluminum block let us do that, but man, did it get hot. But my fingers didn't. Well, let's brush it and see what we got here. It looks like I favored the top piece just a little bit more. It's definitely a little bit uneven, but it's not too bad. I mentioned earlier I wasn't 100% sure that this root got in there with complete fusion into the root of the joint, and that's the reason we test things sometimes. So now there's a look at it. We'll do a cross section on here, a little polish and etch using some Scotch Bright pads. This will let us know whether we got complete fusion into the root, and it'll also give us a, a view of the profile of the fillet weld. And you can see I, I definitely favor the top just a little bit. Could have stacked the beads in there just a little bit better, but it's it's not too too far off. Hey, my online store is at weldmonger.com. I would appreciate it if you'd give it a visit. If you're interested in the TIG finger that I use in this video, or other things like gloves, tungsten, filler metal, TIG kits, and other quality welding gear that's been tried and tested, 
visit weldmonger.com. Sure would appreciate it.